Hello and welcome to another budget and legate video. We have a 2008 Ford Transit Connect. Well, actually, this one's a seven seater, so it's a Toronto or Toronto, whatever you call it. But it is essentially a Ford Transit Connect. We have to do the clutch on it. So this is going to be a couple of parts, maybe two or three parts. I'm not sure yet. And it's going to be how to basically completely strip and to refit a brand new clutch. And we will be doing the full clutch kit. It is absolutely pointless just repairing or just replacing one bit. I think it's just the clutch that's gone on this, but we're going to replace the pressure plate, the release bar and the works because even though maybe it's just the clutch that's gone, the pressure plate is going to be weak. The release bearing could go at any time. So honestly, because it takes so long to get in there, once you get in there, just replace everything and then you won't have a problem. Honestly, it's the thing to do. So let's get stuck into it. There's a couple of things you can do first, but because the, the vehicle's on the ground, I'm just going to kind of do a few bits at the top. First thing I'm going to do is remove the battery. But obviously when you remove the battery, you need to make sure you have your radio code. Uh, if you haven't got it, you're going to have to get it because you are going to lose it. Another good thing to have is when you're doing a job like this, make sure everything is tidy. So put all your tools away. Make sure you've got everything in the right place so you're not looking for it. It's easy to get to. And not only that, have some sort of magnetic tray where you can keep all the bolts you take off all in one place. What I tend to do as much as I possibly can when I take something off, is to try and put that back in it's try and put that bolt or anything back if i can so then you know you're not going to lose anything and you have everything where it should be because believe me it will make your life easier in the long run you're not looking for things you're not trying to find things or anything like that everything's where it should be so battery is out we have normally three bolts but this just seems to be oh yeah one so one bolt here, 13, and two 13 mil bolts on the bottom. The likes of these bolts, I'm just gonna leave inside the actual tray because then you know exactly what they're off and you can't lose them. Couple of clips on the side where the wires go into, so just be able to push them back. This now will come out. One battery tray. Now, dog can see the rabbit. So I can see it, well, a little bit better. Not 100%, but we can see it a little bit better. Next thing I want to take off is the air box. So I'm going to take off the sensor first, a little red switch here or button. Just lift that up. This sensor should pop out then. There we go. Take the little clip off the side of it as well. There we go. Move that out of the way as best as we can. And this should just pop out, which it does. This clip has already been taken off. It shouldn't be, but we'll put that back on, obviously, as we uh, connect it back all together. And that will just come out in one. Now, you do some air boxes aren't just uh, pushed into rubber some air boxes have physical bolts so don't just try and rip it out you need to make sure first because otherwise you'll snap the bottom of your air box but hopefully now you can actually see we have the main gearbox mount here i obviously have the gearbox here so we can see uh, a couple of more bolts we can also see i don't know if you can just see down there the actual uh, hydraulic release bearing is just here so that has opened up things so much more and we can kind of see where we're going but we don't want to disconnect anything from here yet um we can disconnect a few bolts if we want to um, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to lift it up now and i'm going to start taking out the drive shafts and stuff like that okay we're underneath because we need to be underneath now before we take out the drives we need to drain the oil from the gearbox this is the actual filler and the oil drainer is just here um it's exactly the same as this is an eight mil Allen key. And as you can see, it's just here. I can't get the camera in, but it's just there where the engine mount is. And what I'm gonna use for it is a three eighths uh, ratchet. Well, even this one, I was hoping to use a three eighths ratchet. And then the reason I'm gonna use three eighths because I got this new one. <laughs> as you can see, it is huge. They're both three eighths, you can see the size. This is completely overkill for this. It's just, I want to use it because it's new 
and I haven't used it before, so I'm going to use it now. And having said that, it was a bit tighter than I was expecting. And when you do this, just replace replace the gearbox oil because um, you're just kidding yourself. This is going to go everywhere now. Oh, I uh, shouldn't really be doing it this way. Just as I thought. So yeah, replace the gear oil um, with the proper stuff. You might as well. And especially with bolts like this, make sure you tighten them up again. And I really shouldn't be using this long ratchet because this is just too long for this job. Um, because it's the sort of thing you'll forget to tighten and the oil will leak out. So tighten it as you put it back and then you can't really go wrong. Now, it seems like we're here, we might as well do a few things. I'm gonna take off this engine mount or the gearbox, the bottom gearbox mount. I'm gonna take off the starter motor and I'm gonna take off a couple of the bolts that are on the bottom before I take off the actual drive shaft. I might as well, cause I'm here. And what I'm gonna to do to make it easier for me, I'm now using a half inch. I'm using this lovely Facon ratchet. I've done a review on them. They're, they're absolutely lovely. To make it quicker, I'm just gonna crack each one of these by hand. And then I'm gonna get the air tools out. So much quicker, and it sounds pretty cool too. Now you need to keep an eye, because as you can see, we've got a couple of different lengths of bolts so what i like to do oh yeah one more behind here which i forgot now this is very tight see this is why you need tools because you can get different tools and you make your life so much easier this is now a long reach 13 mil ratchet spanner Now this one is still very tight. I don't know if this has been off before and someone cross-threaded it, but it doesn't feel great. Oh, this is getting stupidly tight. See, this is the problem when you work on cars. You can run into these sort of problems. Now, to be fair, if this bolt snaps, it's not the end of the world. You'll get away without putting it back because uh, you still have three other bolts. But this is the problem, um, unforeseen problems like this, and it can just take you so much longer. I think we're gonna get away with it though. He's behaving itself now. And there we go. Now with something like this, what I suggest is you just put the bolts back the way they were. So slide every bolt back into its place. And this way, you can't go wrong. Leave it down in a safe place and you know where them bolts go. Simple. Now, so as that's off, you can see how much the engine will actually move. But again, that's not going to cause us a problem at the minute. What I'm going to do is I can see we have the bottom crankshaft sensor here, which I'm just going to pull the clip. I can't show you because it's just in the way. I'm just going to pull the clip, move it out of the way. So that's done. I can now see one, two, three three 30 mil bolts at the bottom we'll take them off now it's just easy to do it now because we're here and what i tend to do with the gearbox bolts is i leave the bottom gearbox bolts on a separate um metal tray to the top gearbox bolts it's just so you don't get them mixed up and to be fair the top ones are normally longer than the bottom ones anyway now i'll see if i can get you in here so you can see that's the camshaft sensor i've just taken off there and just right up here one of the things is you can't quite see it, but there's another 13 mil bolt there. So we're going to take that one off next. And obviously they're the two we've just taken off there. And next is the starter motor. Right now, because we've disconnected the battery, we shouldn't really have to take off the wires to the alternate. We might have to, but we just need to take the bolts off and kind of tie it up somewhere and leave it out of the way. There's three bolts on it, three 30 mil bolts, but there's also, there's a clip here which holds these wires. And not only that, there's actually there's an earth wire in the middle. So you need to make sure you put all these back once you uh, are ready to put it back. And if you're unsure, if you can't remember, if you just take a couple of pictures with your phone and then you can always go back on them and see exactly where they are so you don't get lost. So it's just a bracket to keep these wires out of the way so they don't rub anything. And especially with the, um, 
earth bolts like this is good to give it a bit of a, a sanding before you put it back. Just make sure you get a good connection. It's no harm, it'll only take a few seconds. Well worth doing. There is the earth. Hopefully you can see that. Last bolt at the top. Okay, that was a ratchet. Now this should come off, which it does, but unfortunately I'm actually hitting the alternate. I'm hitting the alternator now, but that doesn't really matter because once the gearbox comes out, that will actually free itself up. So I'm not worried about that. At least, at least it's out. We do have two bolts on the other side of the gearbox now, which are going to be a lot harder to get to. So maybe it'd be easier to take that starter out. See, there's two bolts to take off this um, wiring, little, this little wiring harness, but I can't get to the second bolt because it's just in the way. The wire's in its own way. So I can't even take that off. This is a stupid, absolute stupid way of doing things. I'm just gonna have to leave it there and uh, struggle to get the two bolts at the top here. It would be easier if it was out of the way, but it's not. So I can't. And now I'm gonna use another ratchet. Now this is, this is just ridiculous. This is why it's nice to have tools because it makes your life easier. But Jesus Christ, I mean, how many different ratchets have we used now? I'm using a 3 8 ratchet. It's a Facon one, the one that slides in and out like the other one. But this one has a flexible head. So it means I'm gonna be able to get in here and actually turn it with the straight head um, you're not gonna be able to do this. Well, you're not gonna be able to do this as easy anyway. Um, even with this, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do it easy. And especially this top one. This top one's gonna be a nightmare. And to be honest, even that's not gonna do it. I'd love to be able to take this fucking start matter off. There's no way I can get into it. That would save a lot of hassle if I could do that. Next thing I have to try is just a normal spanner, which I've now got it on, but do I have the leverage on it? Oh. Yeah, so after all that, a normal spanner saved the day. Now there really is only one more bolt I can take off before I have to start taking off the drive shaft. There's nothing else that I can take off. So let's take this off, but this is going to be difficult because this is even higher and there's pipes in the way of this one. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I might have to get this from the top somehow. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that from the top. There's no way I can get that from the bottom. So, next thing is me to do is take off the old drivey shaft. See, bang off the wheel first. All right, so we have the wheel off, and all I'm going to do now is hopefully I only have to do two things. We will see is disconnect the bottom bore joint and disconnect the actual bolt from the CV joint. That should hopefully give me enough room to take the CV joint out of the hub and then to disconnect it from the gearbox. But if it doesn't, then we'll have to maybe take off the track rod. Worst case scenario, we're gonna to have to disconnect the shock. So 32 mil socket for the CV joint. I'm only going to show you on one side because it is essentially the same on both sides. Just want to make sure that moves. See, that doesn't move. So that, that could be a problem, that CV joint stuck in there. So before we go any further, I'm just going to see if I can shock this out of the way. Now, it moved. That's all, that's all I'm worried about. So it's not seized in there. So 24 mil socket for the bottom ball joint. Lovely. Now I'm going to use my one man ball joint popper. That's the correct name for it, by the way. Now, hopefully, I should just be able to push down on the other end of this, and this should pop out. And as you can see, it works lovely. Ah, not to worry. We can do other things. Hammer. There we go, beautiful. 
Now, once that's down, I need to pull this out. Yeah, so it doesn't go back in, that's good. Now, hopefully I have enough room to take out this CV joint. We will now see. And yet yeah, we do. Now, if you didn't have enough room, all you need to do is disconnect the um, track rod end. If you've got a car with the sus two suspension bolts where it lifts forward, not where the shock goes inside the hub, just take off them suspension bolts and that will lift forward. That will be easier too. Now what we've got to try and do is get the cup out of the gearbox. This can be a nightmare. Just going to get a lever bar in here and hopefully, if we've got enough room, this should just pop out. But as you can see, it won't. The problem is I just don't have any room to put this lever bar in, which really doesn't help. Hold the joys. Don't really want to be doing it the way I'm doing now because you could rip the CV boot. Um, right, this could be a nightmare now. How are we going to get you out? Smaller lever bar maybe. Might give me a bit more room to lever it out. Nope, it's not going to work. Hi, right, this is just ridiculous. Just too tight, there's no need for it. Now if I can maybe lever the engine out slightly, because I've disconnected the bottom engine mount, that might leave me enough room to get this in, which it does, and hopefully prop it out. But I think we'll get away with that. Or not. Nope. Not even that will work. Ah. I just don't want to disconnect the boot. I want to take the whole thing out together. But it looks like I'm going to have to disconnect the boot. Yep. No choice. Just rip the boot off. I haven't damaged the boot. I just have to put a new clip on it, that's all. And uh, I still need to get that cup off, but hopefully now it should be a bit easier with everything off. With a little lip on the cup, I might just be able to give it a bit of a shock to take it off. Ah, fucking hell. This is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. Right, I have tried and tried and tried and cannot get this stupid fucking thing off. And it's really gonna cause me a problem when the gearbox is lowered. Um, so for the minute, I'm just gonna have to leave it. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll worry about it when the gearbox gets dropped. It might, might not be in my way, but I have a funny feeling it's going to cause me a nightmare. But there's nothing I can do about it at the minute, so I'm going to crack on with the other side. Right, because um, everything is underneath this engine mount, not, or the gearbox mount, normally things are to the side of it, I'm going to have to take it off now, but I have nothing supported. I'm going to be using a, a top support. I don't want to put that on yet because it's going to get in my way. So what I've done is I've supported the gearbox with a jack, so this will allow me to undo this engine mount take off all the gear linkages, take off the bolts, then I'm going to put on the top mount and then we're going to disconnect the gearbox. That's going to be the easiest way. And hopefully that cup being inside the gearbox isn't going to make my life too difficult. I think it's going to be a nightmare, but we will soon find out. So what I need to do is take off this engine mount, take off this plate and take off the, the engine mount base that's on the gearbox. 450 mil bolts first. You've got to love air tools. Believe me, you need a compressor and air tool that will make your life sunshine and rainbows and daffodils and unicorns and all that. Now for the center bolt. Now it should be 21 mil if memory serves, and it is. 
Once I undo this, you'll see the engine drop. That's why I have to just support the gearbox. Otherwise, the engine's just gonna fall down. You're gonna damage your gearbox, damage your engine mounts, do a lot of damage. Now it's supported on the gear, on the uh, jack. Hope we can take this off. Sometimes it's gonna be a bit sticky. Put all the bolts back in here, just so we know where they go and move this off to the side. Now we need to get this plate off. Um, I think it's just gonna be easier if I do take it off. And it just seems to be these two 10 mils here. And I do need to use this really long ratchet because you know, I just, well I just do. It's not because it's new and I wanna use it, it's because I need to use it. Because this 10 mil bolt could be like really tight. And you need this 17, I think it's 17 inches. There's one, and two. Now, just makes things a little bit more easy for me. I can just see a few things a bit better. Now, I can now see the gear linkages. I can see the clutch cable. And hopefully now, I can take off the actual gearbox mount that's actually on the gearbox there's three bolts to it should be 15 mil which they are so let's see if we can get this off now i will not be using air tools to um put this back down because it's just too dangerous i might be using a little air tool just to shoot them down but i'll be tightening everything by hand all right the only way i can get this is with a wobbly bar so i'm gonna use the long extension and the short extension with the wobbly bar and as you can see you can actually get quite a lot of movement that should be normally straight but we can get that much of an angle which will hopefully allow that on the bolt which it does i'm gonna have to use this as well just to clear that now wobbly bars love them that, as you can see, is now, this is what the engine or the gearbox mounts base. So we'll just put these bolts back again, just so you can't get them in the wrong place. Now we can really see what's going on. We have an overflow pipe here. I'm just gonna take off because it's gonna get in the way. We have a speedo sensor. So just disconnect the speedo sensor. Um, what else? We have the clutch cable and the gear linkages. Now, just push this button down if we can get you in a bit better on the gear linkage. Now, this is the gear linkage here. So hopefully you should just be able to push this button down and this theoretically should lift up. Now, I'm going to try without getting my hands in the way, which I most of it can't do. And no it doesn't on most gear linkages it's better to actually unbolt the, the frame that the gear linkage bolts onto rather than trying to take them off but on this one unfortunately i can't do that so i'm going to push this down again and just use a little bar and hopefully just persuade it out there we go that's one out the other one is right down there you cannot see might have to get that on the bottom don't think I can get that from the top. No, I can't get that from the top. So I'm gonna have to get that from the bottom, which is not the end of the world because I'm gonna have to lift this up anyway to um, do a few more things underneath. But before I do that, I wanna take off everything I can. So when I lift it up, I'm physically ready to take the uh, gearbox off. Right, the next thing is this cable here, which is the clutch cable. And just behind where the metal finishes, we have, if you can see that, we have a tube, well, like a brake line. So I'm gonna cramp that first before I disconnect it from this end to stop all the fluid coming out. And I'm gonna use one of these fellas, these are brilliant. They're designed to clamp off the pipe, so what you do is you just put it over, squeeze it together and slide this little clip up, which locks the pliers like that, which means I can now Forget about it, disconnect this, and the fluid's not gonna go everywhere. Then we have a little clip. I don't know if 
you can get that on camera hopefully you can see that this little clip you get a small flat blade screwdriver be very careful pop this up now that clip we should get with the new one but save it because you, they're very easy to lose it is very important that clip holds the line in place this now should just pop out there we go we just need to get that out of the way so it's not going to affect us just like that now i'm going to have a couple i've got two bolts i think i've got three bolts left unless there's one right here and hopefully there isn't oh, would you, you know it there is right so i've got one right at the top which I just cannot get from this side. It's gonna to have to get from underneath. I don't know how I'm gonna get that. I've got two more at the top and I've got that one that we didn't get off from the starter motor and I'm just not gonna be able to get you in place. But essentially we have one here, one here, one down there and one about there, but it's from the, it comes in from the back. So once I take them out, we'll turn the camera back on and hopefully we should be uh, ready to go kind of sort of now i got the bolts off i haven't managed to be able to get the bolt off at the back but we'll do that from underneath but the top two bolts of these they're kind of a funny looking bolt so you have to take a 13 mil off first then there's this and another 13 mil the reason these are like that is because once you take them to 13 mil but there's a bracket that holds on a pipe so you have to then take the pipe off which then allows you to take off the gearbox bolt and now we've done that I'm going to support the engine by the top. So I've got a top engine mount brace here. Um, some cars you can't put a top engine mount brace on, like the newer cars, they just don't allow it. They're all plastic. So you have to go from the bottom. They actually are quite cheap. I made that one, but they actually are quite cheap. The ones underneath are a ridiculous price. So I made one of them as well because it's just crazy. But these top mount ones are relatively cheap. So all I'm gonna do is connect the engine to it. And it's very simple right here hopefully it shows up there's a big hook where we can literally just hook our little thing into it so i might hook it into it first so hook that into it take the washer off and then bring this up and that's actually hooked into the engine some cars don't have them on and it's it's an absolute nightmare when they don't have them on but with this setup, it means I can lower and raise the engine just by twisting this, and it's very, very handy and very quick. Now, I'm just gonna let it take the weight of the engine. I should now be able to remove my jack. It might move a little bit, but that's nothing to worry about. So you can see it did go down a little bit. Now, you do have to work quite quickly because we've got a lot of weight just on that little hook. But once we get it up, I'm gonna get my gearbox stand also to support the gearbox just to help everything but now we'll be able to shoot this up on the lift right so as you can see i've got my gearbox stand on it supporting it but what i need to do which is going to be a bit of a nightmare i need to get up there which you're not going to be able to see you can just see the two gear linkage cables hopefully i can actually disconnect them by a couple of 10 mil bolts if not you have to twist them and as you twist them they they come off the little slots but where you can see that empty bolt there, there's another one on top of it. And I've got to try and get all that. There's no way I can record it because I'm just going to get in the way. But at least that gives you an idea of where they are. Once I get the gearbox off, I'll show you exactly where them bolts will go. I'm going to try my best to get these camera angles. Now I need to get the light in better. Can we see now? Now, if you see them two bolts, can't see, but there we go. That's the other... Um, gear linkage cable and them two bolts directly underneath is what holds the bracket on i do suggest you always try and take the bracket off because to try and spin them off the gear linkage cables normally break so i'm in from the passenger side wheel i'm not gonna be able to film it but at least that gets you a good idea of what it looks like and where to get it from right we've got all the bolts off there's one more bolt on that um gear linkage cable i just can't get off so I'm hoping once I get the gearbox down a little bit more, I might be able to get it off. The other problem I'm still going to have is that cup on the gearbox. I know it's going to cause me a problem. I'm going to try and wiggle this out and do something with it. I'm going to have to kind of keep the camera there because I've got no room. But what I know I'm going to have to do first is the gearbox is too high. So I'm going to have to 
get up there and turn that um, bolt down a bit. Right, so hopefully that's enough. But as I can see straight away, we're on that cup. Right, we're lucky enough. We've actually managed to get that cup to the side. So we might be all right, but you just want to make sure you've got nothing caught. Nothing's connected still. Nothing's going to get caught and ripped off. So what I'm going to do now is I think I've got enough room to take that 15 mil bolt off. Two wobbly bars and a normal extension just to get in. But hey, it works. That's all that matters. So two wobbly bars and an oil extension to get that bolt off. Now, my gear cable, gear linkage cables are disconnected. Well, this, that actually did it a lot better than I thought. I thought I was going to have problems with that cup, but uh, it's looking okay at the minute. Famous last words, of course. This is normally easy with two people, but I'm on my own again today. Gonna have to take our time. We're very close. Just don't want to catch anything. You've got water dripping from something, I'm not sure what. Just need this, there we go. Well, I think. Well, I mean that that they don't normally need to go don't normally go that easy um these are the two top bolts i was talking about right at the top and this little which one is it yeah this little fucker here this was the problem the uh that shouldn't happen so the hydraulic cylinder is exploded in half which shouldn't happen and i can see a lot of clucked debris there but we're replacing everything so doesn't matter um, I'm going to take off this cup now because it is going to be easier for me to get it in with the cup not there, but at least it's down. So I'm well happy about that. I'm just going to put this back up there just to support it. There's no harm just to help support the bar at the top. So there we go. I'm going to leave this for part one. Part two, I'm going to show you taking off the clutch and how to set it and how to line it up and put it back in. And part three is going to be chucking the gearbox back in, which is always harder than taking it out. So yeah, that's it really. It's part one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget, you know, like it and all that sort of stuff. Check out our forum. Sign up to that if you haven't already. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. We'll see you for the next one.